from Vin Diesel's Institute for the Advanced Study of Metaphysics and its Applications to String Theory. This is Kurt Berglund with a special report on season ticket baseball, which is being, um, has its own Facebook page, which I encourage you to join and find out more about this game that is exciting and it's different and I think it's got something good to offer, and I want to show it to you tonight in the beta version that uh, Clay Dresslock has made uh, available to us on Facebook. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is a sort of unboxing of the, um, even though it hasn't been delivered and it wasn't in a box, what I did was I just downloaded and printed the things that uh, Clay has made available on the Season Ticket Baseball face page. And so, <laughs> and so, um, there we have it. So I'm going to show you what the cards look like. I'm gonna show you how the game works. I'm gonna show you the pages of the instructions and kind of how things break down. And when you have questions, please put them in the comments below, and I will try and address them in a future video uh, to break down this game and to encourage you to uh, stay tuned and pay attention to its development. Clay's done a number of things right already. He's been uh, very interested in what potential consumers think at different design points of the game. I think that's a great idea. He's been out front in developing a game that's got a little bit different take, and I, I like uh, how he's developed it, and you'll see that in a few minutes. And the third thing that he's done that I think is really creative is he's developed a uh, sort of computer, an opposition manager uh, that you can use if you're playing solitaire to give yourself someone to think against, and that's something that most games just don't do, uh, at least not in the cards and dice version. And he's developed that as well. So we're going to take a look at all that stuff. Season ticket baseball right now. All right. So we're looking at uh, the instructions and the sheets that you're given in the beta version. If you decide to print it out and test the game for yourself, this is called season ticket baseball. The first thing Clay's done that I really appreciate is he's given a quick start guide. Uh, the instructions are not, there's several pages to them, but uh, they're not difficult. And if you've played other Sims, you kind of get the rhythm of it. Um, the first thing that um, is important about the game is that the first number that you read is a D6, and then, so your red, white, and blue, the white and blue are D10s, the red is a D6, and this will resolve the vast majority of the things that uh, will come up in the gaming that you do. Um, so what happens is that, um, well, we'll look at the cards in a few minutes. So first, uh, the quick start guide has two pages, front and back, uh, and kind of goes over the basics. And you could certainly get um, you get the game going with that, along with this second page, which, re which reviews defensive strategies that a manager can employ during the game, as well as offensive strategies that the manager can employ. If you had these two sheets, and nothing else, you could get probably 90% of the game managed right off the bat. The, uh, the opposition manager, the auto manager, uh, there's a sheet devoted for that. And that's also um, uh, for, uh, basically for offense. Um, there's a page that deals with uh, injuries for those that are doing that or are doing a replay. Uh, you may not want to, but there's a, 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 an injury sheet that goes over the rules for that, breaks out pitchers, and it also gives a sort of a new component, or at least an unusual component, and that is playing hurt. 
So you can still have your players try and play through an injury, but um, their performance is diminished, as you might guess. All right, next, uh, all sorts of potential injuries. Everything from too much vaping to a paper cut. No, I'm kidding. None of those things are they're actually there. But you get the severity of injuries uh, listed on uh, a chart that goes for several pages. And depending upon how you get that injury, uh, the injury will vary. Then there's a, a section... Um, of the game devoted to rare plays, and I'll show you how you get to the rare play charts, but there are several pages of potential rare plays to add flair uh, to your game. Again, depending upon what the situation is, the rare plays vary. With the beta version, you get a full uh, set of instructions for season ticket baseball with uh, an excellent index and then it goes through how to play the game in more detail than you get in the quick play chart um, and this goes for um, 12 pages or so now oh no I'm wrong I'm short on that it goes more than 12 it goes um, 18 pages um, some of this you may not want to use. Some of this is more advanced strategies. But it has everything from stealing to taking the extra base to bunts to sacrifice bunts to uh, uh, bunting with two strikes. Um, all sorts of defensive strategies. Infield in, corners in, no doubles defense, holding the runner, not holding the runner. And then a, a, a whole bunch of, let's see, four pages of advanced rules that um, incorporate the, the auto manager as well in case you wanted to do that. Then there's uh, additional developments that are coming um, dealing with, um, with weather and... Um, there are some, most of the weather stuff and ballpark effects are well developed, but um, there's a few uh, things that are still kind of out there. We'll look at um, uh, park effects in a few minutes. One thing that's not in the game, and he talks about in a separate box where he's um, talking about designer's notes is extreme defensive shifts. And basically he's saying he's not including those. You can even pitch around the hitter, as you can see at the top of this page. You, there's rules for how to do that, but there's not rules for shifting because he's saying that those are built into the results in the, uh, the batters and pitchers' performances. All righty. So with all of that said, pretty comprehensive set of instructions, 18 pages for the main rule book. You get the quick start guide, offensive and defensive strategies, and the auto manager. Now let's look at the cards themselves for the players. I, print, I didn't print off every team. I just printed off a couple of them. So let's look at this. Um, Going to surprise you, I'm sure, that I printed the Brewers. Um, let's look at Zach Davies' pitching card, uh, 2019 Brewers, and we'll look at Anthony Rizzo's offensive, his batter's card. Uh, oops, we should have these reversed. Um, so that you get a sense of what the cards look like and how the game is structured. So... Uh, you have your position in the upper right corner, the way that they, they bat and throw. Um, we'll talk about stamina in a few minutes, but let's get the dice rolls down first. So what you see here is 100 here, and then all the way to 499 here, and then you see the 500s up here. So let's break that out. Pitching outcomes go from 100 to 299. 
and you see a range. There's also a common area for both lefties and righties, and then there are splits for lefties and righties. Those are common to everybody. So the pitchers have a common area from 100 to 199 for both lefties and righties, and then they break out from 200 to 299. For batters, the batters' rolls start from 300 to 399. Again, common, no splits. And then everybody's splits start at 400 and run to 499. So you're probably saying to yourself, hey, wait a minute. What about those 500s I see? Is this, you know, how does that work? Well, that's a good question. So let's take a look at that. The 500 level outcomes. So let's set this up so that you can see what that might look like. If you roll the dice and you get a five, um, well, let's give it a Zach Davies outcome here. Let's say it's a five, 10. All right, so you've got your red, white, and blue outcome and you had a 500 outcome. Now, any of the 500s end up being uh, defensive checks. Defensive checks. So, in this case, if you roll a 510, it's hit to the pitcher, but it's, an, it's a base hit. All right? If it's, and it's based on Davies defense. If, on the other hand, and it goes by the scoring system on baseball defense, so 5-1 would be pitchers, 5-2 would be catchers, 5-3 would be first baseman, so Rizzo's come up on 5-3, five, 5-4 five, is second base, 5-5 five, five is third base, 5-6 is shortstop, 5-7 is left, 5-8 is center, and 5-9 is right, so the 500s are the defensive checks and the nine and then and the second number is what position and then the third number tells you what specific outcome so if you roll a 516 and davies is on the mound he commits a one base error it's an e1 for the it's a it's a one base error on the pitcher all right rizzo same thing you roll a 530, and it's a single with a two-base advance. It's a long single. So um, that's basically where these numbers land, is the 500s for the defensive checks. But there's a 600 as well, and we need to look at that now as well for... Um, those results. All right. So let's look at that here. Wait a minute. Pulling these aside. Every ballpark has its own sheet. Now I ran mine off on cardstock, but you don't have to. Regular uh, printing paper works. All this stuff is fine. Here are your 600 rolls. This will change per ballpark, but every park has 600 outcomes. How do you get a 600 outcome? You roll a six with your red die, and then you just roll your your white and your blue, and you get a six, in this case, you get a 645. Now, this is where pitcher fatigue comes into play. If the pitcher is fatigued, you add 10, so you'd go from 645 to 655. And you can see that as you go down the list, the outcomes get worse the higher you go. So the more fatigued you are, the higher the number goes and the worse the outcome gets for the pitcher. 
So this is how pitcher fatigue is built into the game. So let's start out here. Let's say you roll a 600. Even if the, pit, if the pitcher is not fatigued, you got a strikeout. If the pitcher is fatigued, you bump to 610, and you've still got a strikeout. But if the pitcher is fatigued two or three times over, you're really riding this guy. Now it's starting to get higher. You get ground out outcomes, and beyond that, you're getting into eventually extra base hits. All right. So, we're going to come back and check out... Oh, one more thing before we leave the ballpark charts is that deep drives are part of batters and pitchers' cards. You can have a deep drive outcome based on that. Now, part of it's weather-dependent because you can get an addition or a subtraction to an outcome based on how hot or cold it is in a particular park. However, let's just suppose that you have a deep drive here to left field. You can go all the way from a bloop single to it being gone based on the dimensions of the park and the weather that's in effect. If your pitcher is tired down here, you can see that you're more apt to get a deep drive result that will result in a home run or at least a long flyout. So the deep drives you find not only where the pitcher is fatigued, but even on just the regular outcomes of the cards. So let's look here at back at Davies and Rizzo. In Davies' case, against a left-handed batter, let's say it would be Anthony Rizzo, you could get a deep drive to center field by rolling between a 284 and a 289. You don't know what to do then, except that if the Brewers are at home, you refer back to the Miller Park chart and you re-roll, and then that gives you a new outcome. You can see Rizzo has the same thing here, a deep drive to right field, versus a right-handed pitcher for outcomes 493 through 499. All right, so this is what, these are the basics of the pitcher's card and the batter's card. The outcomes go from 100 on the low end of a pitcher's card to all the way on the uh, ballpark chart. to modified pitcher fatigue getting you all the way to 738 and beyond, depending upon how tired your pitcher is. Of course, your basic roll can only go to 699, right? If you go 6 and then, where is it, 9 and then 9, that's as high as you can roll in the game except you add 10 per level of pitcher fatigue and you can get well into the 700s. I hope that makes sense. All right, now how do you get pitcher fatigue, you're asking yourself? Well, that's a fine, fine question. So let's look at that section of the rules. Pitcher fatigue starts at zero when the pitcher enters the game. So if we're looking at Zach Davies, he's at zero. Stamina rating is the number of innings in which a pitcher can pitch without risk of fatigue. So he can go five with no risk of fatigue. After exceeding stamina, any base runner allowed adds one to the pitcher fatigue level. All right, and for rolls 600 to 699, add 10 for each level of fatigue. Rolls below 600 are not affected by fatigue. So let's say it's the seventh inning. We're well past Zach Davies' stamina, but we're rolling 100s and 200s. None of those are affected by fatigue. Fatigue only kicks in 
when you start seeing the red dye go six, that's when you know fatigue is gonna start to matter and you start adding 10 to the outcomes. Um, all right, so, um, for stolen bases, both, I should say this first. At the bottom of each card, you have the uh, pretty complete, actually, uh, statistics for the batter and the pitcher. As you can see on Davies and Rizzo's card, uh, at the bottom of the cards, you have pretty complete stats from their uh, 2019 seasons. Uh, that's kind of nice. It even gives uh, uh, splits broken out versus lefties and righties. Uh, I haven't spent a lot of time trying to crack the codes or anything like that. Uh, but you can see uh, here, Davies gave up a 250 batting average versus lefties and a 251 versus righties. For batters, they're just aggregates uh, against all uh, types of um, pitching. But it's still nice, and I like it. At the top, next to the um, next to the position that the player plays, you get the number of games that they played on defense at that position. I like that too, um, especially if you're interested in trying to stay to something that is close to um, historically accurate for, and not sort of abuse people. You get a good idea, especially if you're not uh, real familiar with the team, you get a good idea of um, who was used and where, and that can be helpful as well, beyond just the games that they played. All right. The rest of this is pretty self-explanatory. The steal rating is for establishing a jump. Speed is for actually trying to steal the base. You had a bunt, arm, defense. All of these are necessary based on certain different types of plays um, that come up during the course of the game. There are a few charts, but not a lot. This is not a chart-heavy game, in my opinion. Um, most of your outcomes are going to be found on the batter or pitcher cards or on the ballpark card. And... Um, those are a few of the basics. So let's take some time now and play a few innings of a sample game and see what that looks like. Okay, so as I'm sure will surprise you, we're going to try out the Cubs and the Brewers for an inning or two and give you a sense of how gameplay works. To do this, I've got my Miller Park Stadium Guide with me right here. I've got my Season Ticket Baseball Quick Start Guide not too far away. And I've also got the Offensive and Defensive Strategy Sheet handy. These three sheets plus uh, the cards for the two teams are the things that I'm going to spend most of my time now can the other things come up? Sure. Can we get a rare play? Absolutely. Do I need to sometimes check a rule? Maybe so. But for the vast majority of the outcomes that we're going to have, um, these three sheets plus the cards will get us to where we want to be. Um, now, I should say that the cards come six to a sheet. Um they're a little bit bigger than most game cards, uh, but I like that because I'm 55 years old and my eyes are not what they used to be. So this is very visible to me and I can read it without any trouble. So that's a good thing. Um, but when you look at the cards, you're going to notice that they're not cut very straight, and that's because I failed that part of kindergarten class. So give me some slack on that. This is not something that uh, Kyle shipped to me. Um, this is just something that I... I'm sorry, Clay. Clay Dreslock. Um, uh, shipped to me. He did not. I printed these, and that was what happened. 
I cut them badly. All right, so let's get the... Um, I put the pitcher on the left and the batters on the right simply because the 100s start here and the 400s end there. Uh, so let's get started. Anthony Rizzo, I'm saying, is the leadoff hitter for the Cubs, which is what I would have done in, 19, in 2019 if I had been their manager. Um, you're welcome, Joe Madden. So Zach Davies pitches, and we have a 147 as our first outcome. The 147 down here is an F8, which is a fly out to center. And so Rizzo is gone. One man out in the first inning. Hope you can see the F8 on the card. Next up, Javi Baez. Davies pitches, and it's a 680. A 680 means that we have to look at the ballpark chart. The ballpark chart is right here. It's a single plus plus. Now, we can get a little bit into the um, uh, what the symbols mean, but basically when you see the symbol plus, that's runners on second and third score, runner on first goes to second. A single plus plus is a long single. Runners on second and third score and the runner on first goes to third. So when you see the plus plus and it's a single, everybody's going two bases. And so if there were people on, um, the 680 would be a single with a two base advance, but there's not anybody on, it's just Baez. And he reaches first on the single. Now, Javi Baez can run a little bit, so let's try a steal. He was 11 stolen bases, caught seven times. Uh, and Yasmani Grandal is the catcher for the Brewers. And Davies, of course, is the pitcher. So let's go through what a stolen base uh, possibility would look like. Uh, it's a two-step process. Uh, for steal attempts, the first thing you do is establish the lead. So you're going two numbers here. One is the steal rating of the batter, which in Baez's case is a six, versus the hold rating of the pitcher, which for Davies is a five. All right. So a batter can or a runner can attempt to establish a lead once per batter. Okay. You can be picked off. I'm not going to go through that at the moment, but it is possible, although unlikely, that a batter can be picked off. Um, but let's go, let's just try and establish the lead. So when you're establishing the lead, it's the steal rating of six versus the hold rating of five. Okay. So. You're going to roll the blue, the white and the blue dice and add them. Doesn't matter what order. You're just going to add them as raw numbers. One plus six is seven. Plus the steal is six. So that's a total of 13. One plus six plus six makes 13. Now, Davies, you get a five, a hold rating of five. And then to every pitcher's hold rating, when there's an attempt to get a lead, you add 10. So Davies' number becomes 15 to 13. And so Baez does not get the lead. Okay, now if you steal with a lead, without a lead, you can do it. Your odds aren't too good. If you, let's say he did get the lead, though. Let's say he did get a lead. Now we look at the speed rating, which for Baez is also a six, okay? And we're gonna go against the catcher's arm. Well, that's Yasmani Grandal. Grandal's arm is a six, as you can see on this card. It's a six. So the speed rating versus the catcher's arm rating, you're adding these numbers to the speed and you're adding 10 to the arm. 
So Grandal's arm is a six, so you're adding 10. That makes it 16. Baez has a six already for speed. And now we add eight. Six plus eight is 14. 14 is less than 16. Grandal shot him down, if we were stealing. But we're not, we're gonna leave him at first. And that's how stealing works. All right, next up is Chris Bryant. With Baez on first and one man out, the pitch from Davies to Bryant is a 519, 519. That, oop, for that, we look at defense. Now, it's a 1 9. So it's a 5, which tells us it's a defense. 1 tells us we're looking at the pitcher. And the 9 tells us which outcome to look at. So it's a 1 to 3. Now, the 1 to 3 outcome means that with a runner on first, it's a fielder's choice because there's not a double play possibility. So the one to three becomes a one to six and Baez is gone on the fielder's choice and Bryant is safe at first. So with two outs now, it's Schwarber coming to the plate and Davies will pitch to him with Bryant at first. The pitch is a 616 so we're looking at the outfield again, or looking at, not the outfield, we're looking at the ballpark chart. 616 falls in this range, and it's a strikeout. And that retires the Cubs in the first inning. All right. Next up is the Brewers, and then we will call this an evening. Uh, and I will wait for your questions on the game, and we'll come back and do a return video on these uh, if you have questions, and I can do that tomorrow. Here's Lorenzo Kane leading off for the Brewers. I've got Kyle Hendricks on the mound for the Cubs. Same, same ballpark chart, because we're still at Miller Park. Hendricks is on the mound, the pitch is a 5.35. 5.3 tells us that that's going to the first baseman. 5 is on the defense chart. 3 is the first baseman's um, fielding number uh, for scoring. So that's Rizzo. Rizzo is the defensive first baseman for the Cubs. So we're looking at 5.35. Here, it's a 3-6-3 three, three double play, but actually it's just a ground out because there's nobody, there's nobody aboard to double up. So that's one man out. Kane is gone in the top of the first. Next is Yelich. Hendricks throws. It's a 5-19. That's to the pitcher. Five tells us it's the defense. We add 19 together. That's the pitcher's defensive number when you're scoring. And the nine gives us a one to three put out for Hendricks. And there's two outs. And now Ryan Braun. And I hope I get something other than the five column. I did. It's a 207. All right, so we have a split. Uh, first opportunity here to show splits. It's in the 200 level, with the red die tells us, 0 and 7. So we look down here. We know we have to look at our splits. Ryan Braun is a right-handed batter. 207 makes it a an F9, which is a fly out to right field. And that concludes the first inning for the Brewers. Now, we, there's a lot of things we haven't gone over yet, um, but this is sort of the introduction to a game I'm excited about doing some more work with, and that's called Season Ticket Baseball. If you haven't joined the Facebook page, I would really encourage you to do that. You can stay on top of things. You can even 
download the beta version like I did and take a look at it for yourself. Um, let me know if you're interested in seeing more of Season Ticket Baseball, and I'll be sure to put it on my channel uh, very, very soon. Thank you for joining me. we got to stick together, people. Hope you have a good night. My name's Kurt Berglund. Thank you for being with me. So long, everybody.